Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Good morning. It is Palm Sunday. And we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord as he enters into Jerusalem this day. I'd like to come and read with, for, with you uh, the text that speaks of that historic entry into Jerusalem. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, all the Gospel writers uh, certainly record this. But this is Matthew's version of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloak on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. I'd like us to take a moment and, and just uh, have a time of silent prayer and, and uh, so at home if you're, when you're watching uh, you might want to pause the video and, and just simply take time to pray for all that is before us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we humbly come before you this day a very historic day. Over 2,000 years ago, you entered Jerusalem. You knew where you were going. But maybe the crowd who was cheering and waving their palms, well, maybe they didn't know. But they wanted to honor you as king. And so today, Lord, we honor you as king and thank you that you were willing to go even to the cross because you loved us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us. And we reach out to you right now. Speak to us, Lord, as we seek your face, as we seek your peace. We reach out to you now and take your hand. Thank you, O Lord Jesus. Amen. The second of our scriptures this morning is uh, taken from Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi. And uh, Paul is writing to Christians uh, from his uh, being in, in jail. And, and he talks about Christ's hum humility and how we need to model that. Hear this word from the Apostle Paul. Therefore, if you hear, have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain, vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. And looking to your own interests, 
but each of you the interest of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, and, and uh, um, one of the ways that uh, we have been taught over the years to look at Scripture uh, is through what we call Disciple Bible Study. And uh, in Disciple Bible Study, this was given, uh, uh, developed many years ago, and there's been thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who have studied the Bible, who have grown in their faith uh, because of this Disciple Bible Study. And uniquely to disciple, uh, they develop ways where you could delve into the scriptures. And one of those ways was to ask three questions. Uh, one question was, after you read the text, uh, you could ask, what does this text say about God? And then you could ask the question, what does this text say about human beings? And then the third question was, what does this text say about the relationship between God and human beings? And it helped you to just think about that and, and um, I think really helped in as far as our search of the scriptures. Another way uh, that disciple gave you to look at the scriptures uh, by, it was by using the, the five senses, uh, taste, touch, uh, sight, sound, and smell. And this is a very unique way, and this is what I'd like us to do uh, as we think about the text this morning, uh, to use those five senses uh, to think about the text. Let's take Matthew 21, uh, 1 through 11. That's Matthew's account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. What do we see here? Well, I see a lot of people with cloaks. And you see, I have my robe on, and uh, uh, they took their cloaks off, and maybe this isn't quite a cloak, but they took their cloaks off in honor of Jesus, and they threw them on the path while Jesus was riding on the donkey, threw them on the donkey and in honor of him as the king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So one of the things I see is cloaks and also the, the palm leaves. And they were waving the palm leaves as well in honor uh, of Jesus Christ, in honor. This is Jesus, as the crowd said, who is this? This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. So one of the things we have going on here from Matthew is the description that people are honoring Jesus as king. But I also see a donkey. And the first time I, when I read this and I think about a donkey, uh, probably most of us maybe have never been on a donkey or been near donkeys. I've only had two occasions and it was way back when I was the teacher and coach and we decided to have a donkey basketball game. And my friends kind of, I, I was willing to participate even though I, I hadn't even been on horses, let alone donkeys. And so uh, five of us or so of our coaches, we decided to participate in this and, and uh, we let our donkeys out uh, onto the basketball floor and we, we lined them up uh, on the, on the uh, foul line and, and we were looking at each other and my donkey was just behaving and, and was wonderful. And, and all of a sudden, when the, when the owner of the donkeys blew the whistle, my donkey went crazy and started bucking and I tried to get on. I had the whole first quarter as people watching me because I would get on and get bucked off. And I even cleared people out of the scores table at one point. It was, everybody was laughing and cheering and I was all bruised up. 
And that was my experience with donkeys. But as it says in scripture, this donkey was very special. In fact, uh, Luke says that this donkey had never had a rider on it. And so it was a very special donkey and it was unique and it, it was a part of this whole prophecy. And, and Matthew wants us to know that the donkey was a part of the prophetic word from Zechariah 9.9 where it says, and it, it, it talks about the king coming and he would be riding on a donkey. And what this indicates is humility. It indicates that yes, Jesus is king and we want to celebrate and wave the palms and cheer and everything like that, uh, but the donkey indicates that it's humility. Well, another thing uh, that in trying to think about uh, the five senses is, don't you hear singing? Don't you hear cheering? And if we read on uh, in this particular text in chapter 21, we would read the fact that it was a lot of children who were reading, children who were not considered as, as really valuable at that point in time in life. And yet this, this uh, child, these children were singing and cheering. And so this humility part, this is the two piece, pieces that we, we want to think about this morning, is the fact that um, first Jesus is king, we wave the palms, and we sing Hosanna, uh, we cheer, we sing, and yet there's also riding on a donkey. Can we think about the donkey for a minute? This humility piece? That's what Paul was talking about when, when he wrote to the Christians at Philippi. In chapter 2, he, he writes his letter and he says, you know, if, if, if we want to follow Christ, if we want to have the same mind as Christ, if Christ lives in us, then, dear friends, we must have humility. And he cites a hymn that had, had been a part of the first century Christian community where it, it talks about the fact that even though Jesus was God and was the same as God, he did not count equality with God, and, and the RSV says something to be grasped, something to be possessed, but he gave himself away. He came as a human being. He was a humble man, and he was obedient even unto death. And then it goes on to say that uh, even though uh, he was obedient unto death, God raised him up. And he now has the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So humility uh, becomes very, very important in, in Jesus' walk and in our walk with him. So what does humility look like right now? Well, this coronavirus crisis, I think has brought out the worst and the best in people. The worst might be an example would be that uh, people try to take advantage uh, of the demise of others. And uh, we understand that some people are advertising these um, miracle cures over the internet. Just buy my product and you will be uh, cured of the coronavirus. And it's a way of taking advantage of people and, and it's sad. But on the good side, just a couple of days ago, you know, Palm Sunday really happened. And what I mean that by that is I was watching TV and I saw in New York where the uh, first responders, the police and the fire were lined up right by the hospital and they were clapping and they were cheering. It was like they were cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord because they were cheering the doctors and the nurses, those who put themselves at risk every day and some have died. That's exactly the humility that we need that right now Let's acknowledge the, the people who are on that front line, those, those people who are risking their lives. It reminds us that it was Jesus who came and humbled himself and was obedient even unto a cross. But he was highly exalted by God and now has the name that is above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord. Dear friends, there's two things for Palm Sunday. We can wave our palms and we can put our cloaks in front in honor of Jesus for he is king. But he was a humble king. And can, so Lord, uh, today, I pray that we can emulate that, that we can have the mind of Christ and we can encourage one another, we can lift one another up and cheer one another on during this time when people are so depressed. We can say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The last song that I was thinking about is, is um, and, I'm, I'm, not, and I'm, I'm not going to sing it, but I uh, want you to look at it and, and think about it. It's called I Surrender All. All to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender all. And one of the verses talks about being humble and humbling ourselves before him, that he might raise us up. So I invite you to look at that hymn and, and just hum it to yourself and think about how we can be humble uh, during this time of distress. Let us pray. All to you, Lord Jesus, we surrender. And as we do, we humble ourselves. That as we celebrate this day, your entry into Jerusalem, we also take the opportunity not just to wave the palms and throw our cloaks on the road in honor of Jesus, but to go forth and make a difference in the lives of people, so many that are struggling right now. Thank you for those first responders, thank you for those who are on the front lines trying to help people recover. Be with them now, Lord. Give them strength. In Jesus' name, amen. As I mentioned last week, uh, you have, uh, even though we are not here at the church, um, there's an opportunity for you to continue to uh, contribute uh, to the life of the church. So many have made a difference as far as uh, donations to P, uh, agencies such as FISH uh, and others, uh, ECHO, who, who continue to try to reach out and meet the needs of people to provide the basic needs of folks who are out of jobs. And, and so uh, you can go online and, and there's a, a place to click on uh, if you want to give uh, as far as the offering is concerned. There's also an opportunity online for a prayer chain to um, share uh, our, your prayer concerns and uh, they will uh, continue. Uh, we will keep them uh, certainly um, uh, silent and, and yet it will be important uh, as we can pray for all the situations that uh, might be coming up uh, during this difficult time. So remember that we do have a prayer chain as well. Uh, the Holy Week schedule uh, as we continue uh, that uh, there will be a combined service uh, of, of Good Friday and Monday Thursday, and uh, hopefully we'll be having that out on, on Monday Thursday that you could celebrate at home and celebrate communion at home, uh, and then uh, Easter Sunday, and uh, we're hoping too to uh, later on after, after Easter uh, that uh, maybe we can do a little sunrise. So uh, I hope that uh, all of you have a great week, and uh, stay safe, and uh, I, I know that we're going to get through this, and, and the Lord will be with us. So let us pray. Lord, go with us now uh, in this difficult time. Uh, help us to encourage one another. Uh, help us to show our humility in different ways as we reach out to the needs of people. Uh, we give thanks for your blessings, and we give thanks that you are with us always. Uh, go with us now. And, and lift us up in Jesus' name. Amen.